one of the questions that comes up a lot is, um, should you crossbreed your St. Croix sheep with other breeds? And the motive is to improve your St. Croix flock uh, with another set of genetics to make like a, a bigger carcass size or, or some other uh, improvement. And it's important to define your goals uh, as to what you hope to accomplish before you start crossbreeding animals. Because if your goal is to have a bigger carcass size uh, with the same or somewhat parasite resistance of the St. Croix, it's already been done. It's called the Katahdin. Michael Peel was a breeder in Maine that spent his entire life trying to um, combine the best out of the St. Croix sheep with the Wiltshire horn. So if you want a larger carcass size and you don't mind sacrificing some parasite resistance, then Katahdin would probably be the way to go. So don't feel like you gotta reinvent the wheel uh, and create your own breed. It just causes a lot of confusion. Because when it comes time to sell your sheep, what are you gonna tell them? Well, what kind of breed do you have? Oh, it's something I made up, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And crossing two different breeds may be like uh, trying to cross a racehorse with a plow horse. You're not gonna make a bigger horse that runs faster and can win the Preakness and pull your plow at the same time. And this study by Virginia Tech a few years ago kind of bears that out. It quoted a study by Preston and Allenby in 1978 uh, about the red Maasai sheep, which are 100% parasite resistant. And it noted that the red Maasai, when they were crossed with Dorper ewes, they became just as susceptible to parasites as the Dorpers. They also compared the parasite resistant of the Dorset or DO, Dorper DP, Katahdin KT, and HH represents the hair sheep, which would be the um, St. Croix and the Barbados black belly. Six weeks after they were dewormed, uh, the body weight or BW was greater for the uh, Katahdin than the hair sheep, but the fecal egg count was nearly as much as a dorp, dorper or dorset. So even with all the genetic research that Michael Peel put into the Katahdin, it still lost about half uh, the parasite resistant of the St. Croix, just to get a little bit larger body size. Another reason not to interbreed the St. Croix is because it has a, a much better flavor than other, other types of sheep. In this study, the St. Croix was evaluated against um, crosses of St. Croix with other wool sheep or even with the Dorper, and it came out to have a much better flavor, tenderness, and overall grade than any other sheep. The St. Croix Hair Sheep International Association lists this study on their website, and it brings out the reasons why St. Croix sheep taste so much better. St. Croix sheep do not deposit fat within the muscles, and so they produce a lean meat without the tallow taste associated with lanolin wool sheep. Every wool sheep, like this merino sheep, has lanolin in its hide. It has kind of a grease uh, that accumulates uh, in its hide uh, from all the wool that it produces. The lanolin from the hide or from the wool is what gives the meat a greasy flavor and what makes um, sheep meat over a year old called uh, mutton instead of lamb. They slaughter these young wool lambs uh, before they have time to produce this greasy flavor. Now the mouflon is the ancestor of all domesticated sheep. They think it was domesticated about 10,000 years ago. If you notice, it's a hair sheep, and so it has no wool and no lanolin in its hide. So apparently a long time ago, someone found a, a sheep that had mutated and started producing wool instead of hair. And along with that, they start producing uh, lanolin. So wool sheep must be a, a genetic selection by man uh, to produce wool because wool is not the normal condition of a mouflon sheep. Um, and so therefore it must be some type of mutation. And there's only two sheep breeds I'm aware of that have come to us as hair sheep from the mouflon, the St. Croix and the Barbados black belly. From what I can tell, they've never been mixed with a wool sheep, while all the other hair sheep have at least some wool sheep ancestry. For example, the Dorper was created from a black-headed Persian sheep, which is a hair sheep, and from the Dorset horn, which is a wool sheep, so it has wool sheep genetics. 
The Katahdin has been created from the St. Croix, which is a hair sheep, but also from the Wiltshire Horn, which is a wool sheep. So it also has wool sheep genetics. The Royal White Sheep is a cross between the St. Croix and a White Dorper. The White Dorper has some Dorset Horn genetics, but also Rambouillet genetics through the Van Roy sheep breed. Every hair sheep except for the St. Croix seems to have some sort of wool sheep genetics somewhere. So one really good reason not to um, interbreed the St. Croix with some other breed is that it may actually be a land race that goes all the way back to um, the Mouflon. It, it may be a hair sheep, one of the few hair sheep that's never been mixed with a wool sheep breed. And that could be a reason why people think it tastes better uh, because it has no wool sheep genetics and therefore no lanolin in its hide. Another reason not to interbreed the St. Croix breed is that genetic testing can tell, can now tell what, what is a St. Croix breed and what is not. The St. Croix hair sheep breeders is working with uh, two companies. One is called Flock 54, and the other one is another genetic testing company out of New Zealand. And what they're doing is finding the genetic markers to determine what is a St. Croix breed and what is not. Each of these dots is uh, a, an individual St. Croix sheep. And it shows uh, from this genetic testing whether or not it lines up with being in the St. Croix breed or not. So if you do decide to um, mix your St. Croix sheep with some other breed, it's going to show up in the future and it will not be able to be passed off as a purebred St. Croix. So that's several good reasons for not uh, interbreeding your St. Croix sheep. Well, thanks and I hope you, uh, hope you like the video.